Hi, everyone. Just to let you all know, we are going to be beginning in about a couple of minutes. Joining us is our new head coach, Kyle Neptune. In our AD ad call, we have attendees obviously hopping on. So just give us a couple of more minutes and then we will start the Q&A session. All right, everybody, I think we'll get started here. Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, Ed Cull here, Director of Athletics, Fordham University. It's, it's uh, an honor and a privilege to, to be with you here today. An exciting day as we'll, we'll introduce and welcome our, our new head men's basketball coach. Um, you know, a lot of you are on this call, I think there's literally 20 here or so that are on this call, are, are true men's basketball supporters and, and, and true men's basketball fans through and through. And I know you've been through a lot in terms of some challenging years. And this has been a real exhausting process. If I could speak a little bit about the process and then I'll hand it over to Kyle and we'll go through the Q and A and questions that you all have submitted or that you have, you know, you, um, you, you, you've been through a lot. So last 60 days, we probably had made the head coaching change the end of January and gave us a little bit of a um, longer runway in this process and the opportunity for me to not only kind of create our, our search committee and set up our search and have a search firm. And, you know, I want to thank our three trustees that were on that search committee, Darlene Jordan, Daryl Brown, John Lamello, and uh, as well as a search firm, uh, Glenn Subiami and DHR International that were helpful in this process. But it allowed me a longer runway to honestly speak to many of you. So many of you here, as I look who's the list that's on this call, I've had multiple conversations with, with a lot of you about our basketball program, kind of your displeasure, your, your, your frustration, your disappointment, um, your, your challenging thoughts of why we haven't been able to get, get things going uh, in the last 25, 30 years. And I took a lot of that to heart in terms of listening, being able to learn from you all, listen to what you want from your program, listening to peer institutions that you liked and that, that you admired. And you know, we had the ability to interview, we actually interviewed over 23 candidates. So it's kind of three buckets if you break it down this way. So assistant coaches, which of course is where, you know, Kyle was in, uh, active head coaches, and then a group of former head coaches who were either um, currently not coaching or, or out, of, out of work or working in the media, et cetera. And we broke down so many from those three categories in terms of 
interviewing conversation. And, you know, a lot of the comments that came from our search committee in terms of identifying objectives and, and that we were looking for, and of course, the strong recruiter, affiliation or understanding of the tri-state area, the metropolitan area, um, coming from a culture or a program of success and winning, um, the ability to have strong communication skills, whether that be, you know, the ability to talk to alumni and donors and fans and also parents and recruiting, the ability to have a strong uh, communication style. And that's something that even I had a conversation with Brian Cashman in the beginning of this process, and he talked to me a lot about finding a strong communicator that connects with people, that has trust and credibility, that, that could lead uh, through that means. And, and the importance of communication today, even pandemic, post-pandemic, is that much more important in terms of the mental health and the future of our student athletes. And the, you know, the more candidates we continue to talk to and speak with, and the importance of understanding who Fordham is, understanding what Fordham is all about, how Fordham was built. Um, of course, a lot of conversation on where we wanted to go in terms of success and how do we establish a basketball program that could be and achieve success in the top five, uh, top third of the Atlantic 10 Conference and put together a winning program. And we all want that. We all know that we all wanna do that, but be able to find the individual that could do this from the ground level up. I, I've been honest and I've said this in a lot of interviews even today, this isn't a rebuild, this is a brand new construction. And, I, and I'm honest about that. And I, I've been honest with Kyle about that from the very beginning, that brick by brick, how do we build this the right way? And, and yes, to, to, towards having success, but make sure that's sustainable for our future. And, and not only just a, a men's basketball program that's successful in terms of building a culture and winning environment, but one that would lead, obviously help support us to have a culture of that for the entire athletics department. And then one that would have that for the entire university where it's a, where the university would be able to feel the ROI, the return on investment of what a successful basketball program could do for the entire priorities of university. From applications to academic success, to academic profile, to brand and promotional and marketing value, to New York City engagement, um, to, to, to diversity in our city, to career, to career mentoring, career advancement in terms of engaging our alumni in Manhattan, taking advantage of all the assets and, help, and utilizing athletics and men's basketball specifically as a support mechanism to help elevate Fordham University on all of those areas and those important priorities. And that was key to me. And what I kept telling our search committee was, we're not looking to convince or recruit a coach and tell them why Fordham is the place for them or why Fordham would be great for them or why moving your family to New York City is good for you. We wanted someone that wanted to be here, that wanted to be in the Bronx, that wanted to be in the Rose Hill Gymnasium, that loved it for what it was. And yes, we have renovations plan, we have facility upgrades plan, and believe me, that's an important part of my job and responsibility here moving forward. But we wanted somebody that wanted to be here. I genuinely love the, the city, love the institution, and saw it for everything that we all do as, as obviously supporters and, and loved ones. And after so much deliberation and conversation about that, we were able to, to find, and we, he continued to shine through the rounds of interviews. Kyle continued to impress uh, and connect with us. And, and by the very end, to have a unanimous decision by a search committee, by our president, by our university and trustees that all agreed on a candidate is no easy process. As I sit here, definitely a little bit fatigued after this, this long search process, but happy to tell you that the process worked. We did it the right way. We put a lot of time and research in. And I say that wholeheartedly. I, I sit here watching a lot of different jobs open up around the country and ADs are hiring coaches within 24 hours of either a coach leaving or letting a coach go. And they probably didn't even meet face to face. Like I'm, I'm blown away by that. And you all are somewhat a New Yorkers or tri-state area folks to like, to trust somebody just that way. Is this not, not my style, not the way to do business, but it was so important that we were able to have the process done the right way, have, have, a, have a bunch of individuals who have a passion the way you all do for men's basketball in this to have an ownership and peace in the process and that we all have shared ownership and success of Kyle and the success of what his future is. And it's on me to have a partner that I can go back to back with and we can build this thing together and, and continue to be change agents and represent change for us is so exciting to me. Kyle Neptune is, um, is everything we've, we've wanted and looked for in terms of energy, enthusiasm, passion, skill, recruiter, relationship builder, communicator, um, 
has had the best, obviously, education, not only just Jay Wright and the national championships and the seven biggies championships. Not that I'm trying to make light of that, Kyle. That's obviously extremely impressive. But like he spent some great years with Joe Mahalik up in Niagara. Obviously, little Joe at Hofstra, he's done it at a higher level. Joe, Joe is, a, is a coach I have a lot of respect for. So his pedigree, his development, born in Brooklyn, obviously a Brooklyn friends. He's played at the Rose Hill Gymnasium as, as, a, as a teenager. He played there at, when he was a student athlete at Lehigh as well. We have an individual here that wants this job, wants this challenge, not afraid. And it's absolutely my pleasure to introduce to all of you uh, the new head coach of Fordham men's basketball. Uh, please say hello to Kyle Neptune. He'll say, uh, see, say a few words and then we'll get into Q&A. Wow. Um, I mean, I, I don't think I could have possibly got a better uh, uh, um, into, uh, better start than that. I appreciate that, Ed. Um, I, I just want to you know, first say how, how thankful I am that um, you know, uh, Ed and the, the committee chose me. Um, I, I'm really uh, humbled um, and honored to now be a part of Fordham University. Um, and then also I wanted to just say what, um, how, how impressed uh, and a huge, a huge piece of why I uh, wanted to be here is, was because of Ed um, and just his passion and enthusiasm and um, just knowledge of, of what's going on here at Fordham and um, how excited he is for what it could be here um, was, it was a huge factor in um, how, how excited I was to be here. Um, and then, you know, me be, again, me being a New York City kid um, and, and how much pride I have in uh, being from here. Um, I always look at my, I look at myself as someone who would have went to Fordham or uh, someone who could be a, a student at Fordham University. And I went to a school that, that's similar in Lehigh University and then uh, being a, a New York City private school kid. And, um, you know, I, I just walking around campus and, and meeting uh, a bunch of different people, uh, it just felt like home. So I, I'm really excited to be here. Um, I appreciate the, the warm welcome that everyone has given me and I uh, can't get, can't wait to uh, get to work. Kyle, so the first question here, and it's, and it's a good one. Um, has Kyle had the chance to meet with the current players yet, the current team yet, group or individually? If so, what was the feedback or the feeling he's gotten from them? So I would just tell you, you know, Kyle and I both met with the team here this morning. Um, great conversation, healthy conversation. And before I, I let Kyle answer that question, I just want to let you all know, I, I really want to thank Mike DePauly, uh, and our staff on what they have done, not only just in terms of taking over for Coach Newbauer at the end of January and, and getting us through a, a challenging six weeks of, of COVID and, and, and the A-10, the A-10 tournament, but even what he's done here in terms of helping our, our players, student athletes, wait out and be patient during this, this extensive uh, search process. It was important that we took our time and do it the right way, and, and the staff and Mike was so supportive of that. But um, Coach, why don't you speak a little bit about your, your address this morning to the team and, and your next steps with them? Yeah, um, you know, this morning I just kind of wanted to kind of listen to the guys more than anything, and uh, they, they they were um, we we had half the guys um, in person, half the guys in Zoom. It's a new COVID world that we're living in, um, and it was great to to uh, put put some um, names to faces and be be in person and, and kind of be in the same room as those guys. And um, like I said, I, I kind of wanted to kind of hear from them and um, you know get get to. Uh, get to learn their personalities a little bit. So it kind of was me asking them a couple questions and then, um, you know, I'll tell them a little bit about myself, but really the, 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 the real work is going to be the next couple um, days and weeks ahead of actually really diving in and getting to know these guys, taking them out to eat, um, spending time with them in the office, um, spending time with them on the court and getting to learn their personalities and their games and uh, what makes them tick. Um, so, you know, I'll, I'm excited to really, uh, you know, get to work and start building relationships with them. Coach, we, you know, you, you and I have talked a lot about and I've, I've, I've expressed a lot throughout this process of, of the importance of the metropolitan area roots, the tri-state area roots, the city roots, which you obviously you bring in terms of, of your, your pedigree and being from the city and being a Brooklyn kid. Um, talk a little bit about, there's a question here about us continuing to emphasize your, your New York City connections. Um, and I guess the Tri-State Area Connections. And also you and I have spoke a lot about the last, especially the last few days, about the whole student athlete experience from a standpoint of, of a, a basketball student athlete, their ability to take full advantage of New York City and Fordham and to use that as a recruiting tool. Talk a little bit about how you, you plan on engaging the city, utilizing the city as an asset. And as well as, you know, specifically here, it talks about the Bronx community. So if you could talk about your ability to having your city roots 
and how you plan on leveraging those from a recruiting standpoint, as well as a, really a retention standpoint. Yeah, well, we, we talked about it. I'm from here. So, you know, I actually got into coaching because of my uh, New York City connections in recruiting. Um, you know, I, I, there was a couple, um, a couple guys um, in, in New York City that helped me kind of get to Villanova as a young video coordinator um, that recommended me. Um, and, you know, from there, um, and, and I, I obviously played um, played in the city as a, as a young man and um, pretty much know uh, the who's who of, uh, of the guys who are in the city. So that was, that was my start. So it, it's kind of my start, my roots and something I'm proud of. Um, and then uh, just being here uh, with these guys um, uh, now, um, I'm, I'm excited to get to work and reaffirming those relationships and, and diving into those relationships. So it's something I'm really proud of. I, I'm, I'm always proud to say I'm a New York guy. That's, that's, that's something that's very important to me. So, um, and then in terms of the, the community, um, you know, uh, for, for me, being a coach is, is really um, trying to be a mentor and help people get better. Um, and, you know, it's something that I'm, I'm very passionate about. I, I want to see our young guys um, become men and become productive men um, and be pillars of the community and using their platform to help others. Um, and that's something I'm going to try to do uh, while we're here. I, I want to make sure um, that they are active in the community. They are, um, you know, we're definitely going to be, um, you know, uh, trying to instill some community service um, uh, platforms that we can we can do to, in the community to help others and uh, not only to help them, but to bring them into the university and make sure um, they look at this place like uh, home as well. Coach, appreciate that. And, and you know, a question I'm sure you knew was coming here and we've heard a lot of here throughout the interview process as well as the last couple of days of doing the media car wash. Um, you have a tremendous reputation as being obviously one of the top recruiters in the country. Um, talk, talk, talk to us a little bit about your recruiting philosophy, type of players you look for, traits and skills you're looking for in your players. Um, and I guess, you know, really tying that back to Fordham specifically on where you see uh, us being positioned as a from a recruiting standpoint or a, or a sales narrative, a sales story, sales pitch, and kind of you know early on in this process, where do you see Fordham being for you in terms of 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 of, of really bringing Fordham to light on the recruiting trail, and how how far you see that kind of expanding? This overall recruiting thoughts together. We have a few questions about recruiting, so I'm, I'm consolidating them. Ooh, okay, <laughs> got to get players, coach. I'll, I'll, I'll speak for them. I know that you know that's coming. We got to get players, and we want talented players, and and we all know that's that's step number one here, right? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> um, yeah, and you know, I, I spoke a little bit before about my relationships in New York, and that that's what what I'm gonna lean on, um, just immediately here to to start out. But you know, not only in New York, I, I've um, been fortunate enough to to recruit or, around the country, but you know, uh, mostly on the East Coast, being in Philadelphia for a number of years, and then you know we, we've um, at Villanova and Niagara, we, we've done a really good job in Washington D.C. as well, but really throughout the East Coast. So you know, I, I have relationships and, and friends throughout the East Coast that I'm going to try to lean on to begin with here. Um, but you know, uh, um, for for me, uh, recruiting is all about relationships, um, and you know. Uh, hopefully, you know, I've created enough relationships that the guys are going to want to help and they're, they're going to uh, see what I see in Fordham basketball. Um, and then in terms of the type of person, I, I, I think we're going to look for like special people. Um, you know, I think Fordham's a special place, um, you know, and, you know, we, we want to look for kids that, that want to be special and want to um, strive to be the absolute best. Um, and that's not just on the court. Um, I, I something that I really believe is that you know, if you build good habits, um, that's that's in everything you're doing. Um, so, you know, it, it, I don't think it's good enough just to want to excel on the court. Um, I want um, I want our young men to um, try to excel in the classroom um, and, and excel uh, as trying to be great men as well. Um, so, you know, I, I always say this: like if you're um, if you're a B student. Um, but you really, that's, that's not bad. Right. But if you could be an A student, why would you, why would you just be a B student? Um, you know, and, and, you know, I, I think that if a, a student athlete is um, not giving their best in a certain aspect of their life, that's a habit. They're building that habit. You're always building a habit, no matter what you're always either getting better or you're getting worse. Um, and if you're, if you're willing to um, let things go in one area of your life, 
um, you know, I, I really believe that that sinks into another area. So uh, I'm excited to help help our help, help our guys um, kind of build the right habits and um, help them be uh, um, just go getters and um, people that think about things a certain way. Um, and, and that's going to be something I take to the recruiting trails to just try to find unique and special people. I appreciate that, Coach. And, you know, kind of the next hot button, as you would imagine, when you talk about recruiting and is talk a little bit about, if you don't mind, putting together your staff and obviously the process there, your thought process. <laughs> obviously, first time head coach, first time putting together uh, your staff, uh, you know, any, any thoughts you would share with this group? Um, and I think obviously ties, I'm sure, to some of your recruiting philosophies. It's also going to obviously tie to some of your your support pieces on, on, on your, your staff that are important here. So if you give a little comments to this group, uh, good question here about your staff. Yeah. Um, so for me, you know, I, I definitely have some guys in mind and I'm going to be uh, meeting with some guys in the next uh, couple of days and weeks here. Um, hopefully, you know, within the first maybe couple of weeks to a month, we, we, we have a, a solid staff that we can. Um, you know, we can, we can dig in and start to get to work. Um, but just in general, um, my thoughts, like I, I always want to, you know, I, I want our, all our coaches to think of themselves as great mentors to our guys. Um, I, I want them all to be great coaches. Um, and I want them all to be great ambassadors to the university. Um, so, you know, if, if we can get all three of those things in every coach we get, um, you know, no, it doesn't matter the, the role that they're in. Um, you know, if we can get all of them, you know, with ha that have those type of qualities, I think we can have a great staff. Appreciate that, Coach. Um, Coach, initial thoughts or your overall philosophy on non-conference games? I know we, you and I haven't talked a ton about, about yeah. scheduling, but we've, we have talked a little bit about opportunities and the A-10 and, and obviously improving our net, but also the marketing and visibility and building a brand identity and a brand for our, for our men's basketball program. So uh, I know we have talked about scheduling a little bit that from that standpoint, maybe if you can give a little bit of your philosophy for, for non-conference games or MTE tournaments or travel, et cetera, and maybe some of your initial thoughts, you know, early on here in this conversation of way you think Fordham could take advantage of some non-conference opportunities. Yeah, well, we, we New York City keeps coming up, right? So we we want to we want to play, and we have some great arenas here, and we, we want to be able to say that some of these places are home. Um, and I think it'd be what what what's better than to say, hey, we play a couple games a year in the Garden, uh, we play you know a couple games a year in Barclays, um, and you know maybe that's not something that happens you know first year, but um, if in three, four, five years from now we're playing two games a year at the garden and two, two games a year uh, at Barclays. I mean, uh, and, and, the, and on top of that, the um, Atlantic 10 tournament. I mean, I think that's something we can sell in recruiting and not only to, to people throughout the country, but also for our guys, I think that's something that they would be proud of. Um, and I think that's something we can use as a badge of honor. Like, hey, we get to go play in Madison Square Garden. It's the best arena in the world, most famous arena in the world. Um, we go, um, we get to go play at the Barclays, and it's something that I think our guys would um, take great pride in. Um, and again, use as a, a badge of honor and um, be a great home court advantage for us. Um, and then on top of that, we just like you know, again, um, you know, I, I, I want to play a, a challenging schedule to prepare, prepare us for the A10. Um, you know, it's one of the best leagues in the country. So we got to be prepared to uh, play in the best, one of the best leagues in the country uh, and, be, and prepared to win the, one of the best leagues in the country. So you, you got to challenge yourself. And, um, you know, at the end of the day, it's you got to be the best you could possibly be at the end of the season. That's that's always going to be the goal. I mean, if that's, you know, I don't like, I mean, we're, we're going to go recruit and try to get the best possible players this this year, um, if the best we can, whatever the best we can do for that year, we're going to come back next year and, and try to be the best we can be again. Um, when that's the A-10 championship, I, I don't know quite yet. I hope it's year one. Um, you know, one of the questions um, that, you know, Ed and uh, and the search committee try to lock me in on uh, when, when I was interviewing was, you know, how long do you think it's going to take? Um, and I'm like, I, I want to be competitive right away. Um, and it's like, okay, okay, yeah, fine, fine. Um, um, and again, they were like, okay, so how many years? And I'm like, I want to be competitive right away. Um, and they kept asking, and my, my answer is going to remain the same. Like, I, I'm, I'm a competitive person. I'm never going to say, ooh, I want to wait 30 years, you know? So um, obviously, you know, Ed, Ed 
um, you know, you said it earlier, like this is this is a this we are building something new. Um, but you know, we're we're always going to strive to be our best, no matter what. Coach, I appreciate that answer. I appreciate your honesty. I appreciate your competitiveness, of course. And um, it's a good segue here to the next question, which is a um, you're keeping in mind, I'm Kyle, and I'm I'm preparing you. I, I love the honesty and I, I love our alums because they're honest with me and they've been honest with me since I've gotten here and they don't hold punches and they tell the truth and New York City. It's yeah, New it's, New, no, it's exactly right. So it's, it, it's, it's New York City. And this this question is exactly that. So, you know, Coach Neptune, can you please share some of the specific opportunities you see in Florida men's basketball well, in terms of, of opportunities that you see in our program, especially considering the lack of success? We've historically not been a winning program. We have not had success in the Atlantic 10. We haven't been in a tournament since 92. We've only had two winning seasons in the last 25. And, and I think you kind of started with it in terms of answering your last question. Talk about your initial expectations and goals for the program, knowing that. But I, I, I like the question because, one, you know, those that know me, I want to make sure we're transparent and honest with all of our alums and donors on this call, as well as I always want to be that way with you, Kyle. It's... um. You know that it's it, there's almost a question we've had we've had this throughout this process of the coaching search too like why do you want Ford why Ford what, what 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 do you what do you see in us and, and why what you know why, why the challenge for you I think is, is, a, is a tremendous question yeah well for me I look at it like okay um I'm, I'm in the best city in the world um I'm in one of the um best academic uh, uh um institutions in the world um you know and uh, and one of in one of the best leagues um, in the country, um, just just that there, just right away, um, that's very compelling. Um, and you know, I'm gonna I'm gonna strive to to try to uh, you know use use those things in recruiting the best way I know how. Um, I, I think New York City, uh, I think we can really lean into that and um, really try to um, make sure that our, our student athlete experience is is as high a level as it possibly can be. Um, and you know, I, I, if if I close my eyes in in, in a couple of years, um, you know, and in the future, uh, guys can come to Fordham University, and you know, the guys that are graduating are proud to say that they played here. Um, that's that's what I really want. I want those guys to be proud and say that they had a great experience here. So here, here's another. I appreciate that, Kyle. I appreciate that that answer. And here's another good question. This is. This is from a, a loyal and generous supporter uh, who's been a sp loyal supporter of, of our men's basketball program for quite a while. And it's a good, honest question. I, I, want to, I want to answer it after you're done as well. But coach, I want to know, are, are you happy or you know, are, do you, are we assuming you are happy with the amount of resources and support you're being provided for your program? And you know, Kyle, I will just reference that. And you, you and I have had this conversation, so I'm comfortable in doing it. As you know, there's, there's a question of, of Fordham's commitment to athletics as well as men's specifically men's basketball in terms of financial commitment you and i have talked about facilities right yesterday's tour i wanted to show you every every hardship facility view so there was no secrets between you and i in terms of this process and you know we talked about facilities we talked about a future three or four year plan five year plan that i put together in terms of improving some of the facilities obviously I, a lot of that's on me in terms of being a fundraiser and a revenue generator in this in this seat and why, why i'm in essence in this seat so talk, maybe if you're comfortable answering that in terms of your, your assumed perception of, of resources and support for our men's basketball program. Um, again, that was one of the reasons why this was so intriguing is that, um, you know, uh, is our, our conversations um, about uh, how, how much we, we were going to put into this thing. Um, and, and yeah, you, you come in and you look at facilities. Are, are they going to be the best in the league? No. Um, but, you know, can anyone else say that they can uh, take a train in 20 minutes and be in New York City? No. Um, can anyone else say that, can many other places say that they have um, the type of academics we have here? No. Um, I, I think that, you know, one thing we can really sell um, at Fordham is the student athlete experience um, and, you know, what, what, what is possible to be done here. Like, you can go to a Knicks game, you can be in Fashion Week, you can go to the theater, you can... Um, you, like there's, there's nothing you can't do in this city. Um, so I, I really want to lean into that. And I want to create a space where our student athletes get to see the best of everything here. Um, and that I, I honestly believe no one else can do that. Um, so why not lean into that? Um, and, you know, 
we, we can we can do something special that no one else can do. Um, and then the other thing is I, I think that we can do here is is utilize everyone on, on this on this uh, call. Um, and we can uh, our, our utilize our alumni base and utilize New York City in that way as well and you know uh, you know use uh, our guys who, who leave here and, and, and graduate they sh they should be able to get jobs and, and if obviously everyone wants to all, all of our guys I'm sure want to play pro after um, but even if you know the best of the best play until they're 35 40 um, and then but in, in five years I could I could look back and say hey, um, yeah, our walk-on that was here a couple of years ago, he's at Goldman Sachs and um, our other walk-on who are, or our other, our star player, he, he's done playing now and he's, uh, he, he's, he, he's in, you know, he's done something in, in fashion week and he's, he's big time in that arena. Um, and maybe someone else works somewhere. And, and if, if we can have that type of uh, commitment and help from, from our alum and, and, uh, and you know, have have our guys have a great life after basketball. Um, I, I think that that could, that could be something that you know I think is very beneficial for all our guys and something that they actually deserve. Um, but also, um, you know, it would be really beneficial in recruiting. And, and again, something that I don't think other a lot of other institutions in the A10 can provide at the level that we can. Yeah, you know, you know I, lo I love that answer in terms of everybody being involved and the entire village being supportive of the process. And that's obviously in terms of, of, of you and I, in terms of our partnership here moving forward and building this and the entire athletics department university, but all of our, our alums, our fans, our, our supporters out there to all be a part of, and that's not just financially. And I think Kyle hit the nail on the head in terms of mentoring, job opportunities, uh, the ability to, you know, obviously, um, really be influential in, in the process of, of, of playing a key role in our student athletes' lives for the four years they're here or, and obviously the 40 years afterwards. And that's the, the value of that Fordham alumni network, I think is a really underutilized asset in terms of athletics and, and especially for men's basketball. So I'm, I'm excited about that piece. And then I would just add in terms of the conversation about resources. We, 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 we you know, the, the plan in place that I've been working on for it's kind of a three or four year plan uh, in terms of really a capital campaign for men's basketball to improve some of the facility upgrades, uh, whether it be in the Rosehill Gymnasium, the idea of obviously, whether it be locker rooms, uh, some of the other amenities that we could utilize, whether it be a, a lounge type area for our student athletes, which is on par or needed to be on par with the rest of our A-10 peers. And of course, the practice facility piece, I, I think are some reasonable facility upgrades and renovations that we could do and that we're gonna to continue to fundraise for. But I'm, I'm really sincere and happy to report to you. And this process uh, is definitely an example and testament to that. You know, the search process, uh, the commitment of, of, of lead donors uh, for men's basketball, uh, as well as some trustees who are part of that in terms of being lead donors as well. You know, the alignment from top to bottom, it continues to improve. And, and, and this search process was a major part of that, but also the commitment financially to Make sure not only you know we talk about being the top top third of the conference top five of, of the conference standings that also just true needs to be true in terms of obviously our financial commitment and that's been our our, our efforts and our, and our goals here in terms of building out this plan and, and the additional increases that have already taken place uh even the last couple of years in terms of increased uh staff for athletics training strength and conditioning increased operational budget increased recruiting budget uh, and that will continue to move forward here as we look at some additional positions. And obviously, whether that be obviously Kyle and his staff, but a video coordinator, a sports psychologist, uh, some of the pieces that we're trying to add to make sure that we are competing at the highest level. I know a lot of you are participants in that survey and that report that was done two years ago. We continue to utilize that as a tool and asset, but uh, and very much so the, the fundraising and revenue generation, even more than ever now, you know, COVID and, and, and obviously moving forward post COVID is gonna be essential for us to make those changes and those improvements we are. And, and, and believe me, I'm committed to that. The university is committed to that. I know our, we have a bunch of, of donors and, but Kyle's point is well taken. We need obviously everybody to, to be on board with that. And I know that's gonna take some time and believe us, as we talk about New Yorkers, actions speak louder than words. And I'm, I'm quick to say that to Kyle, I'm quick to say that to all of you that we need to, to build back the credibility and trust of individuals like yourself and others that maybe have stepped away or been on timeout or that got rid of their season tickets. And that's on us here to build that back. And that's part of our plan, part of our commitment to gain the trust of, of all individuals and show them obviously that the proof is in the play. Um, last question I have here for you, Kyle. 
Fordham has been impacted by the transfer portal in recent years. How do you plan to protect against the loss of key play players leaving? So almost that retention topic that we've talked about or the student athlete whole experience that we talked about. You've talked about mentoring, a lot of pieces that tie into it. So um, not only getting the players, but making sure we keep them uh, and this, this new day and age of recruiting and retention in college basketball. Yeah, I mean, it's a, it's a new reality in college. When I, when I was in college, then no one would ever transfer. I mean, if they did, it was like one person every three or four years. Um, now we have, you know, three or four people transferring from each team a year. So it's not just Fordham, it's everywhere. Um, you know, and, you know, we've been lucky enough that at Villanova the last eight years, that only, I want to say, three or four kids transferred in eight years. So, um, you know, and, and I think a, a key reason for that uh, was just the relationships we had with each guy. So, um, you know, that's that's one thing I'm really keen on, and that's going to be one of the the major things we try to do is make sure we have great relationships with each guy um, and, you know, uh, and, and not, and not just on the basketball court and we're, we're, we're pushing to be great men and leaders. And um, they feel like they're getting something out of Fordham that they don't have to leave and, um, you know, for greener pastures where, or, you know, perceived greener pastures. So, um, you know, and, but also you got to understand that it is a new day in college basketball and, you know, the, the rules are changing that way, you know, where, you know, just a new transfer rule where you don't have to sit out um, and, and just where, you know, our guys, uh, not, I shouldn't say our guys, but um, just where young guys' minds are at this point in time, it's kind of, it just kind of is what it is in terms of that. So we, we got, we got to hopefully get some special guys um, that want to be here and want to be part of this thing. Um, so, you know, I, I think that's, that's the thing we'll have to do. And that's something we have to do in recruiting, but, um, then especially when they get to campus, uh, uh, making sure we have, uh, myself and our staff has great relationships with them. So they don't feel like they have to leave. Appreciate that, Kyle. One, one last question here. And it's, it's, kind of, it's a good one. It's kind of a, another, uh, New Yorker straight and direct, um, yeah. blunt question, which, which is why I like it. Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll put you on a spot here a little bit. Uh, question is, what what did Jay Wright say to you when you first told him about Fordham, given this opportunity, given the given the given the relationship, and given his thoughts on that? And then a little bit a little bit more of, of, of info here, detail, yeah, especially given obviously that that Tom Pacora had obviously worked here previously. I know you know Tom a little bit um, in terms of obviously the crossover of, of the Jay Wright family, and then also uh, another little jab here, but this is New York directness, especially after we we lost Eric Pascal to you at Villanova. Uh, so, uh, so that's three things. So yeah, said, yeah it's, I'm sorry. Yes, three. So, um, first and foremost, when I when I told Coach, he was like, "Are, are you still gonna be ready for?" Well, at the time, this was early in the in the tournament, and I had a scout um, coming up. So he, he was like, "Are you gonna be ready for Purdue?" Um, because we, we that was a team that we could possibly play. So he 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 wanted to make sure that you know no matter what I was uh, looking into on this side, that I was ready. Uh, to to uh, to scout Purdue if we played them, so that that was the first thing he told me. Um, uh, and then in terms of uh, Tom Pacora, he's someone that you know I, I look look up to. Um, he, he's um, a, a unbelievable person, as as many of you you, you probably know. Um, I, 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 there's no one I would rather uh, sit around a dinner table with and and get a couple of drinks with. He's he's just a, a, a riot. Again, as many as as you guys know. Uh, and, um, you know, someone that I, I, I really uh, like being around. Um, and then uh, Eric Pascal, um, yeah, I, I look at him as almost like a little brother. I was um, really um, influential in his uh, development at, um, at Villanova. Um, he, he actually had um, fond, we talked about it, um, not recently, but when he first got here, he had a fond memories of, of his time here at Fordham. Um, you know, and that's a, another relationship that, um, I'm proud to have. I, I was t I was uh I was joking with his dad today. His dad Juan texted me congratulations today, and I I uh, I was joking back with him saying, "Hey, um, uh, Eric Pascal camp this summer." So um, I was joking with him about that. So I appreciate that, Coach. Appreciate your answers and your honesty and transparency as always. Um, I just have a, one of our alums just text it just sent it in here that they appreciate where. Uh, we're taking all the questions head on here. Well, that's the way we're gonna we're gonna do this moving forward. Kyle knows that about me already, and that's the way we want to make sure we're doing. It. So, I 
there's nothing to hide. There's nothing to, to be afraid of. We're going to be honest and open about where we need to be, our, our, our challenges, our weaknesses. And I think that's, that's the key piece here for us to move forward and to, to, to find additional successes and build this the right way. Um, I, I'm, as you, as you can tell, I'm super excited about Kyle Neptune. I think he's just the absolute breath of fresh air and the new approach and new way and new Fordham and new men's basketball program that, that we all want and need. Um, I'm super excited for him. Obviously he's a super heavy lift ahead of him in terms of obviously the questions that we talked about today, recruiting and staff and building back culture and environment and getting people back into the Rose Hill gymnasium, but it's on all of us. We, we are going to be doing that together. That, that's part of the new way that we're going to do this. It's not about, bringing on a head coach and he's got to save the universe and, and spread his magic wand and find LeBron James, uh, the next LeBron James here in the Bronx. He, he's, we got to do this together and build it the right way. And I know you all want the same thing. And, and what I'll, I'm asking of all of you is to be supportive of Kyle, be supportive of the program, continue to be supportive with your classmates, your teammates, your former roommates, your former loved ones. We, we got to build this back bit, brick by brick and we're never going to pretend to do it otherwise. And, um, we need you all to be open-minded, committed, continue to spread the good, good, good word, good vibes here. We all know you want, want winning. We all want the same thing. Let's all build this together. So I'm, I, I'm so excited, so proud. Um, Kyle is, is a tremendous leader. We have, we have bright days ahead of us, but we need all of you to be a part of it. We need to do it all together. We all need shared ownership. Uh, we need all to be investors and stakeholders in this process. And I know you all want the same thing. So I, I thank you for joining us today. Um, we'll be sure a lot more Kyle Neptune here in the future as he's, he settles into, I guess, day two. I know it's been a, been a wild ride for Kyle already, but I, I can't thank you all enough. The excitement and the future, uh, we are all bullish on this stock. We all know what the potential of this program could be. We all know what the potential needs to be. And we all feel the same way and we're all gonna continue to push and fight the same way. And there's no shortcuts, there's no easy way, but we're gonna do it together. And I'm excited, not only for Kyle and the basketball program, not only for, for, for our athletics department, I'm excited for Fordham University. Cause I don't think they even know what it's gonna feel like to have a successful basketball program, what that's gonna do for the, the complete uh, opportunity for Fordham University and our institution uh, locally, regionally, and nationally. And um, I, I thank you all so much for your time. Um, it's it's a, been an absolute pleasure. Kyle, any last closing remarks here before we end this, this afternoon? Yeah, no, I, I just wanted to uh, thank you again, Ed. And um, I, I really want to uh, tell you how much I appreciate you you making me feel so welcome here. Um, I, I really, I, I'm really appreciative of that. And um, I'm looking forward to uh, meeting all, everyone on this call. And hopefully we can create something here that makes you people proud. And that's that's really what I'm looking to do. That's the that's that's the ultimate goal is to make sure that um, you think when you think about Fordham um, and you're you're in, in your community or you're you're talking to your friends, that's something that you're proud of talking about, um, and, and it's something that you're you're proud of being a part of. Perfectly said. I thank you all so very much. We, we love you. We appreciate you. Thank you for your loyalty and continued support of, of Fordham men's basketball. And I uh, hope you continue to stay safe and healthy. And we look forward to seeing you all soon in person. So God bless. And again, thank you all. Go Rams.